Hello, everybody. And uh, for me, good morning uh, from London. Uh, my name is uh, Tris Dyson, uh, and I'm the managing director of, uh, of Nesta Challenges uh, in the UK that develops challenge prizes to, to solve pressing technology and social problems. We're going to have a great conversation today. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, the title of this session is Fostering Shared Humanity in Times of Upheaval. But really what we're talking about uh, is how the COVID pandemic has illustrated how the nations of the world uh, can cooperate, but also some inadequacies in cooperation uh, where leaders of climate nationalism hoarding vaccines and so on. Um, and how it might be good aspects of global vaccine development cooperation segue into a cooperative peace across the world? How can we use this crisis moment to generate a new start? And are we mature enough to wish for a better world and maybe achieve it? So it's going to be a great conversation. And I'm joined by some fantastic uh, speakers today. Uh, so I'll just briefly uh, introduce who they are uh, before we go around and, and hear their opening uh, comments. Uh, so firstly, we're joined by uh, David Goldsmith, who's president of the Goldsmiths organization in the US. And uh, David's got many degrees in sciences. He's worked in over 300 in industries. He's lived in Hong Kong for the last 10 years and also here in Europe. Uh, and he has ownership in over 20 businesses starting in, in university. Uh, he's an author uh, and loves to solve big challenges, uh, which is certainly music to my ears. Uh, we're also pleased to be joined by Dinesh Joshi, who's the chairman and the managing director of Satyagiri Ventures in India. Um, and Satari Group has diversified activities in the field of shipping and infrastructure, and currently into investments. Uh, currently, he's moved into investments and mentoring of startups in India uh, and also in the Netherlands. He has special interest in agriculture uh, and mobility tech. We're also joined by uh, Professor Ismu, who is heading up the new National Research uh, and Innovation Agency uh, in Indonesia, which I'm particularly interested in because uh, in the UK, we're also setting up an advanced research and innovation agency. Uh, and then finally, uh, Ranul Rickham Singer, uh, who is a Sri Lankan politician who notably served as Prime Minister of Sri Lanka um, and is perhaps best known for initiating a, a ceasefire uh, and, and a peace process uh, in Sri Lanka. Um, so we're going to kick off with the first question, really, which is what has the COVID-19 pandemic revealed about the potential opportunities for global cooperation? And, um, Ranil, I, I uh, start with you and some of your thoughts on this. No, COVID-19 has shown us that COVID has no borders and that we should be uh, working together. So far, the vaccine has taken over. And one hand, we have found that we're getting attacked and former President Trump <coughs> uh, just pulled US out of it when they could have given leadership. The Wuhan issue is sometimes overshadowing the act actual problem. So we, we have these issues that the collapse of that global leadership can be countered if the G7 at their Kabi Bay Hotel meeting can come up with some uh, solution, then we can go forward. For instance, Boris Johnson has suggested that everyone gets together to vaccinate the world by end of next year. Now, that, that's a good proposal. If, if you can act on it, it's not only vaccines that you need here. As you see in India, Sri Lanka and others, you need ventilators, you need oxygen, you need the whole pack. And I think you go down to Africa, you need medical personnel. Secondly, is the G7 uh, finance ministers meeting that they are looking for minimum uh, operate rate of 50% because how far government raise money? And for every 10 million uh, people, you will have to spend until the solution is found at least 250 to 300 million dollars. Can't afford. And then the final push. I mean, these are interim, but what's the final push that we can do uh, to get a solution uh, for COVID-19? We still haven't found these only interim. So we have to work on all those. 
and i think uh, the g7 meeting is a start g7 meeting which of course is happening um this week in in, in cornwall in the uk is so a big big hope for that resolving some of those issues um perhaps Hinesh, i could ask you the same question um from your perspective in, in india um yes what's the what's the pandemic revealed about cooperation for for you thanks chris um good morning good afternoon good evening everybody first of all i would like to thank uh, uh, my dear friend frank richter who is the chairman of arasi for inviting me for this uh, prestigious meet and uh, chris thank you also very much for curating this excellent panel with eminent panelists uh, let me uh, first start off with the basic ethos of uh, what the indian philosophy has been for you know centuries together and what we called vasudeva kutumbakam which means that the world is a family and taking that into account i am proud to say that uh, the indian leadership especially the prime minister of india has demonstrated uh, what he has preached he has practiced uh, when the pandemic started and when india did not have so many cases uh, india came uh, right in the front and supplied hcu to most of the countries to see that uh, you know how this uh, uh, you know uh, the covid was uh, tackled in addition to this um, what we have also seen recently with uh, our honorable prime minister when he started the vaccine diplomacy when we started manufacturing uh, vaccines he saw to it that it was not just the large countries but also the small countries who received uh, you know vaccines from india and uh, so it was in africa in caribbean in south america in the small nations so i think you know, this has uh, probably you know opened up or rather set the tone for nations to cooperate and uh, Uh, I very much agree with uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Vikramasinghe what he said about G7. But let me also add that the recent decision what has been taken by WTO, WHO, IMF, and World Bank to cooperate together and invest 50 billion dollars that would really uh, you know help us to fight the pandemic to a great extent and get the lives and livelihoods back to a certain extent so that you know it will help us to uh, sort of uh, recover faster thank you thanks dinesh so yes in the as the world pharmacy as, as you right has been has been really generous in sharing uh, vaccines and and, and and so i suppose leading by example and then um significant amounts of money um being made available but perhaps are, are we sure if that's enough or not um but uh, perhaps um i could turn to you now ishmu um from your perspective in in, in in indonesia um what's what's your view be of, of global cooperation and in response to the pandemic thank you uh oh, good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone uh Thank you. Uh, let me start also by thank the Horasis for inviting us to join the uh, webinar. And uh, well, in terms of cooperation, uh, as, as our previous speaker has been told us, that uh, the pandemic is no border, and uh, without I mean, uh, if until everyone is safe uh, from the pandemic, we we actually we we. all cannot if from the pandemic so we in indonesia has believed that co- global cooperation is very important on that and our president and also the uh, indonesia has been actively in fo- of in uh, gavi for example in terms of how the vaccine diplomacy and make sure that everyone in the world can uh, be vaccinated uh, well in indonesia being a fourth most populous country in the world with uh, 2000 and, uh, 270 million people Uh, we have a target of 182 million people being vaccinated. Uh, we at the moment uh, achieve about 10% of the targets. So about 80 million, uh, 18, one eight uh, million people have been vaccinated in Indonesia. But uh, we still uh, have a lot more to do. So our target is that this year, uh, I mean, we met our uh, targeted uh, vaccinated to be finished this year. 
Uh, in terms of the vaccine that we use, uh, we use uh, Sinovac from China, but uh, we also collaborate with them in terms of the third phase of the uh, clinical uh, trial was done in Indonesia also. So uh, that's uh, one of the terms of collaboration, even the, uh, I mean the of uh, the upstream research and also the uh, first one and first two uh, trial which is nothing in China. So uh, uh, we also been uh, actively involved our diaspora, our uh, partners in research in uh, other countries, how to develop the. It, uh, it is in our country now. We use uh, several uh, framework or several platforms to develop the vaccine ourselves, which we believe this is important. We we have not sure whether uh, the current vaccination is enough to protect us or to make us immune from the uh, corona. So this is uh, it's very timely and very important. So this uh, we learn is many of our today problem uh, can only be solved with uh, uh, a stronger collaboration between us. Thank you. And, and just, just, just I, I, I might have missed it, but the, the trial that you mentioned, that was in cooperation with the Chinese vaccine development, was it? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the third trial phase was uh, also conducted. In yeah, okay. Um, David, um, from where you are in the US, you, you've, had a, you've had a significant change of political leadership during the pandemic. Uh, what, what's your view yeah, been of, of, of global cooperation response to the to the, go, to, to the pandemic. Uh, again, like everybody, thank you for uh, inviting me to this panel. I'm, I appreciate being here. I will start with a, to answer that question by asking a few questions. When we think about global co cooperation, are we thinking about 7.5 billion people? Or are you thinking about a certain region or a certain group of people or a certain dynamic or a certain industry? The second is, would you have anticipated with a global pandemic that the world would have worked together? Meaning countries would have actually joined together to, for example, keep the cost of PPE down so that everybody can have access or everybody could have access to um, any form of PPE. Would you have thought that in a situation like this, countries from, uh, from Europe to Asia to the U.S., South America, would have sat at the table and shared information to accelerate at least the vaccine? It is not a cure, but we haven't seen any of this. We have seen across the world people hoarding their vaccines, taking them first. We have seen countries being pushed aside, for example, on the African continent, that they could not afford for thousands dollars for a ventilator. We have seen companies, there are 200 and about 40 companies, who have worked on solving and creating a vaccine. But out of them, was it an altruistic solving for a global pandemic? Or was it a financial means or a positioning to be one of the leaders in the development of drugs? I personally, being pragmatic, being observational, don't see the collaboration. Could there be? Sure. But I do think that with Trumpists and nationalism, with uh, with Boris, with Olacero, the Russian situation, Chinese situation, Brazilian, I think that we have entered into a new light where the world will not be. And for the next few decades, as collaborative as we'd like to be. Uh, so, so less optimism, it sounds like, around the, the G7 that Dinesh was 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 pointing to as a, as a moment where the world might come together. I, I don't I don't think so. I don't think we saw humanity at its best. I think we saw people who had jobs fare better than people who lost their jobs. Uh, in March of 2020, I did a video and I said, "This what are you not seeing in March of last year?" 
And nobody in the world, and my business is global. I've worked with um, Nandan Alakani, Azim Premji, go down the list on the Indian side, around the world, the executives. And I said to them, what aren't you seeing? And I said, it's this, Indonesia, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, continent of Africa, Brazil, and Mexico. It is where the slums or the most challenging part of the world exist. And until those areas are solved, we will not solve this pandemic. But there was nothing happening last year. And today, if you look, we're in the same boat we were a year ago when it comes to those. Those who've gotten shot, at least for now, it's just safety. So that, that's, a good, that's a good challenge. I think, Dinesh, you, you've been talking about actually lessons to be learned from uh, the slums in India. Um, but also, you, to your language, the world is a family um, and that we may be coming together. What's your, what's your response to, to David's, uh, David's view? So um, we have the largest slum in uh, Asia, which is called Dharavi. And last year, we had the maximum cases. There are 5 million people who stay there. Yeah. Fortunately, we have not had any cases much coming in Dharavi this time. And that's because, I mean, what I feel is like we educated people behave more like ignorance. But it's basically people who are down the pyramid who are very responsible. And it's not just Dharavi. It's, there are several villages in India where, you know, if you look at it, it's just, you know, the country level, the state level, the municipal level, and also the community level. So it's the community level who have actually understood their responsibility. They have ensured that, you know, people are safe in their country, people are vaccinated, I mean, in, in their particular region or the villages. And there are three, four villages which, which have, you know, been modern village in the state of Maharashtra. Uh, we don't have a single case till date. Let me also, you know, highlight that you know, US went, uh, you know, was suffering for about four months. Uh, UK and Europe for more than two months. You know, we have more or less bounced back in the last you know, uh, 30 to 38 days. India has vaccinated 200 people in 160 days, whereas US has done in 134 days. We have also been, you know, first, first has been more the side of the US. What I'm trying to highlight is, uh, you know, the pandemic has um, uh, sort of, uh, exposed, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, system in various parts of the world. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, learning. And David, I do agree with you that, yes, there have not been, uh, you know, corporations um, uh, from, you know, uh, in say, developed countries to a great extent. So I feel that if we all look at it, uh, you know, in a way that we have to, you know, completely comment. I mean, if you're talking about humanity, it cannot be borders. You, you have to break the borders and, you know, cooperate. And then only we can talk about shared humanity. Otherwise, the word humanity doesn't exist. And, and Rano, um, you, you, you said you were suggesting, I think, that uh, there was a big moment now at the G7 where, where you, you had some optimism that there was going to be a kind of a, something of a change. Do you think that's? Do you think that will happen? I am. A about it, no doubt about it. But I do also, uh, you know, I, I much tend to agree with what David has said on that. And let's wait and watch and see how things would happen. I, I was, I was wondering what your, what your view on that was, Ranul, uh, as a former, as a former world leader, um, whether you thought that now that, that there was going to be a, a sort of a move towards greater collaboration, cooperation. G G seven would be the start. And I think Boris Johnson will push for his uh, uh, vaccination program. After all, he needs something else to show before the next election. Let's be quite frank at the political side. Similarly, U.S. needs to get at those taxes. Not only U.S., others too. So those two will work. But then from there, you have to get on to a meeting. I mean, there has to be a meeting between President Biden, President Xi, President Putin, and US, China, UK, Russia, EU are becoming the main suppliers, but you have to bring in other countries. I mean, basically, 
what Dinesh said is that IMF working paper by Geeta Gopinath yeah. of the yeah. fund. Look at it. Then we have so many other issues. Global tourism has collapsed. There is the global debt. So how, how are we going to work, work, work this out? And if you look at South Asia, what happened in uh, April for the Hindus in India, it was the Kumbhal Mela festival, nine years. For Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, traditional New Year, Cambodia, where people went back to their villages, they have weeks holiday. Malaysia and Indonesia had Ramadan. So in, in that month, you had so many uh, festivals which brought people together. And today you find the whole area is out of uh, uh, control. So we are, we are still on learning curve. I would look at G7 only as a beginning, but we, we have to go ahead. That, that's, that's, that's the reality. So as David says, I'm also not a person who thinks he is going to be over this year or next year. It's, it's going to continue. And how is the global economy? And the health system going uh, to do it. Some other health systems are on the verge of collapse. Today. I think yeah. we're, we're we're starting to move into you know there's dealing with the the epidemic the health epidemic itself, and then there's all the other issues that we need to address, and um, uh, which I think is a is an interesting line that we need to pick up on. But I, I wondered I wondered um, Ishmu to the point where we we I mean David was talking a bit about I, I guess. Na- vaccine nationalism and and a sort of a, de- a degree of selfishness on behalf of the sort of of North America and Europe perhaps and a lack of co- cooperation. No, but no, I think no, you. No, I, I wasn't saying North America. I'm saying <laughs> humanity as a whole. Okay. That we, if you look around the world, do you yeah. know one person who gave up their shot to send it to another country? Do you have you seen individuals, not just governments? individuals on a global scale they can find pockets but on yeah. a global scale have we yeah. seen the expe- expected address of this um, pandemic and i would argue it's a lot lower down than i would have ever anticipated i would have thought we would have worked together we did yeah yeah I I, I I I take the point. Sorry, and I was putting words in your mouth, but because but, it, I, I, it, I, not just America, I, it's the world. But but I suppose I was I was I was I was I was try, I, I was leaning towards asking a question about what about China? Because like the, the you, you, I mean, you mentioned that Indonesia have been cooperating closely with China. It, it, how's the how's the response been from from a perspective of, of cooperating and collaborating with China? Is is, is my question? But uh, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> well, well, I mean, uh, we've been uh, in Indonesia. We, in, in terms of collaboration, we've been open to uh, any country that's uh, as long as it's it's, it's uh, uh, become uh, um, non-dependent on a, a political point. Of, I mean, in Indonesia, is is collaborate with any country in the world. But because of when when. Uh, uh, Vaccine is uh, available in that time uh, because of our national uh, developing vaccine is still in in the preliminary stage in the very upstream stage of the development. So we we trying to secure uh, uh, whoever is uh, available for us and and among I mean it's not only from China actually we also uh, secure from AstraZeneca from uh, Pfizer as well. But but uh, at that time we we, we only get uh, uh, not a large uh, number of dose at the time. So, uh, so that's from China, we get a substantial number of, of That's why we uh, get a. So, uh, yeah, in terms of that. And, but we, we also in Indonesia, uh, we develop our own as well, but it's still in, in the process. And let me also comment on the, uh, how Indonesia also dealing with the pandemics and mentioning about the. A festival of Indonesia, Ramadan after Ramadan. This is it's very hard for us. But uh, people have been uh, following the order of governments. Uh, we government also involving the scientists uh, uh, in terms of how we uh, uh, like lockdown uh, uh, locally and also doing uh, uh, the social distancing. And people have been following that uh, quite remarkably. So. We, uh, I mean, festival after Ramadan in Indonesia, usually it's a big number of people uh, doing the uh, 
uh, between uh, cities uh, movement, but during these last two years, there's been dropped down uh, quite uh, substantially because of the uh, pandemics. So that we we can uh, manage uh, in terms of the uh, uh, movement. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move us on now yeah. to I think I think we can say there's been a, a, a sort of. At best, global cooperation has been mixed. Um, I think we all agree we've, we've not hit knocked it for six. Um, or um, if you're American, knocked it out of the ballpark or, or what have you. Uh, but let, let, let's, let's take, um, uh, let's take the, the challenge uh, from, from, from Ranul now, which is that the, with, everyone's coming together at the G7. Um, and there are there's the pandemic, there's the aftermath of the pandemic to deal with the economic consequences, the debt, et cetera. Uh, so my question is, let's be optimistic. What needs to happen? What do, what needs to happen at the G7, G20 in the UN, et cetera? Um, uh, what needs to happen next? And, and, and what are the issues that need to be addressed? And um, maybe I'll, I'll go back to you on, on that one, if that's all right, Ranul. Yes, I, I think after G7, there has to be a serious meeting between as I said, President Biden, President Xi, and President Putin. They've got to deal with what level they're going to cooperate and where they're going to compete. After that, you could go to the G20. So the key meeting is there. That, that will decide to a large extent how we go ahead. Come, David, you're a. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I think we're going to see dogs fly. Before we're going to see a complete global cooperation with just those three, that's part of the challenge in my mind, is I'm looking at Japan with a 3% inoculation rate. They can't open up their borders. They can't until they that solved. There is no global approach to how we're going to... Not eradicate, because that's not what a vaccine does, but how we're going to minimize the impact. And we just, we're expecting politicians to not be politicians. I don't know how we can think that way. There's just, it's just not, look at what happened in the United States with the, with the Russian hacking. Look at the challenges. Between, I mean, it's just, the, the, the pile of things to get to before the pandemic is like three meters high. <laughs> okay, but the question is, is what, what needs to happen then? Uh, there does have to be a consensus on the need for global for globalization, the need for global trade, the need for certain minimal requirements for the world to operate. If that basic level is understood, put everything aside, and if we can address those basics, let's use Japan, 3% is not a good number. So the world has to help Japan. The world has to help Brazil. The world has to help South Africa. And if we can't do that, then all we're going to be doing is being nationalist for a period of time. Sure, but that, that does mean political leaders getting together, doesn't it? I it mean, means it, everybody it, getting together. It's organ yeah. nonprofit, profit, government, military, and education. The United States put out the U.S. military to give shots. That's one of the things that did. Well, the U.S. military or the Russian military or the Chinese military could go help other countries too. There okay. are options. We're not using them. Okay, and and Dinesh, the, I mean, again, you're in the world's pharmacy. I mean, you're 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 going to be tasked with 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 doing this, right? Is that, uh, uh, what do you think needs to happen next going forward? As long as the politicians don't behave like politicians, we can see, <laughs> we can see a lot of. You know, I mean, pardon me, uh, sir, but uh, I feel that. Um, me, myself, and I, that approach should be stopped by various countries. And that would actually lead to, you know, the global cooperation. What we have seen before, uh, you know, I can say 2019, um, you know, the world was more into the protectionism and not, uh, you know, globalization. I cannot just say by it was 
whether it was you know make america great again or you know whatever but i think we had lost globalization somewhere and i think that vacuum has been filled with president biden coming in um but uh, you know uh, less at the better we've got a lot of challenges in the states let's not but put I, it on america <laughs> <laughs> Sort of that. But I do see India becoming a pharmacy capital and also a vaccine capital shortly, because uh, we are going all out. Uh, you know, I mean, mainly we have. The, I mean, the, the size of the population, so we need to, you know, ramp up our, uh, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutical industry more. We have, as far as the Remdesivir was concerned, we have. and we are going to do as far as the vaccine is also concerned so i can see india being uh, you know leading the, the you know the pharmaceutical as well as, as the you know vaccine manufacturing and we will uh, cooperate so uh, will uh, with uh, you know various nations uh, i can say we will foster shared humanity okay let's 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 let's, let's assume that's happened <laughs> um what i mean so, so again to the, the i mean uh, we we started to talk about um or ranel started to talk about what's next because we, we've been talking very much about vaccines um and obviously that's priority number 1 but we started to talk or ranel started to talk about a number of other things what you know what's what's next once we hopefully address the the vaccine or 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 or, 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 or uh crisis um maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to you Ishmu and on what you think the challenges are going forwards um once the vaccines in the past Chris I just interject for a minute if you don't mind yeah yeah uh, I feel that countries should now look at investing in health infrastructure mm-hmm. they should look at investing in human development in education in skills and not only in defense if we if we look at that then i am sure that it will lead uh, you know to global cooperation much faster that was my point. okay um ishmu perhaps i could come to you what do you think the challenges are once the vaccines well yeah i mean in term of us in, in research and innovation uh, area well uh, we we uh, strongly uh, aware that Uh, as, as as our previous speaker has been, been mentioned uh, that many of our problem in today world is uh, is uh, is uh, need to be uh, uh, globally solved so it, it it it's it's been solved in our country it's not solving the problem yet before everybody else is also solving that problem so uh, we i would agree with this or mention it earlier about education and health problem uh, Uh, many say that almost uh, 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 of course we're not expecting another one but this is probably many scientists say that it is not the first pandemic that we will uh, see we uh, will be see more in the, in the future uh, climate change for example uh, we in indonesia in so far our agriculture people is uh, expecting the regular uh, schedule in in terms of uh, cropping and uh, harvesting the crop but now because of the climate change we uh, is uh, a lot of uh, uh, flooding in several area and also uh, uh, i mean sometimes no rain at all in in several area so that's we 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 have been seen a lot about that and other problem as well so uh, we we hopefully in this pandemic even all the leaders and all of us a lesson uh, the global collaboration is mm. we 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 are truly uh, need a uh, uh, global collaboration mm. interesting point like it, it, is this a lesson that forces us to get our act together to address some other big challenges um maybe what, what do you think rano no i i would agree with dinesh that first we've got to ramp up our health system sri lanka has been Uh, spent a lot of money on health, and we've been able to hold it so far because of our health system, our health professionals, and down to our public health inspectors. There have been a lot of shortcomings, there have been mishandling, but somehow or other, the health service has got us through. I think it's similar to uh, I think Kerala would be the closest to what 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 we have here. 
but in africa it is yeah. terrible so how, how do we how do we upgrade the services maybe as david said even send up military personnel who are uh, trained in it but unless you handle the basic services and get the health services just saying the numbers of one is ramping up production. how do you ramp up production secondly the health services take our region there is only one internationally recognized institute on research that's the all india uh, institute for medical research and so far what serum institute is doing is, is basically producing under license but i think bharat biotech they have come up with the first uh, indigenous vaccine yeah far more has been china has come to indigenous vaccines so india also has to look at it but we've got to have regional centers which, which should then cater to the whole region to bangladesh to sri lanka others maybe even going up to indonesia so we have we have to create it we got to plan out how we are going to uh, really run the production where are we going to plan our production and who is going to bear the cost of upgrading the system and in many countries paying for the vaccine this be uh, realistic in some countries today with the economies closed they can't pay for the vaccine if they pay for the vaccine they won't have fuel so these these, these are these are the underlying social economic problems that have to be gone into we are still looking at the vaccine and not looking at the connected ones and unless you develop the health services you can't hold it this is going to be something that will go on for the next few years and do you think the biden plan to remove patents from vaccines will will help fun the biden plan to remove the patents is good european seem to be worried but look if you have to pay them something at the during world war 2 in usa and all they just took over the company or companies came they produced bombers everything but there, there was no question of patent or rights they were paid something the executives were paid like 1 dollar and uh, finally they won the war but if they went to patent basically us and uh, uk would not have produced the uh, armaments that germany and uh, and they gave off to soviet union i mean they gave the right to be so we to produce so many vehicles you know? so at, at the moment you got to uh, i think it is high risk the patents and we, if european firms and others have spent money okay then we have to reimburse them i'm not saying you shouldn't and maybe a small profit but that that something that can be done for the development cost okay okay um david um come back to you let's um Let's assume that we we do get this um, this uh, cooperation that's so badly needed, uh, and that we do start to improve vaccine rollout to to countries that uh, that 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 are that are behind or that need it, like Japan. Um, what next? That's a, that's a good question. If we're taking the topic of global cooperation and the needs that are out there. Uh, I see six mega challenges coming on the horizon: climate change, mass extinction, resource depletion, displacement, social, physical, political. Uh, there's p- uh, unrest, social, political, environmental, all sorts that are rolled up, and explosive impact. Those six mega challenges, unless they're solved, will make the pandemic look like a small factor, as we spoke about just about Indonesia. So every day. I wake up and I work on that. I don't believe we're going to be solving. That's what this is behind me. I don't think we're going to be solving the challenges or if we had follow the same the same path we took for the pandemic, we're in we're in deep trouble as a as a global population. And to change people's behavior with a lack of understanding of behavior is going to be extremely difficult. The fact that in China there were 16,000 PPE companies before the pandemic and there were 67,000 in January 2020 was a sign that people can react and move and mobilize to make things happen but we don't see that we don't we don't cross borders i don't hear anything from the colleagues i talk about about india i don't hear anything and yet india had 400,000 people who got were sick and that's a right right for another variant that makes another variant but the world is not looking they're looking at their homes 
They're looking at their families. They want to go out. And I think we'll, unless we make some changes, we won't get there. So the next thing is, is there is something on the horizon and we have to do something completely new to make it happen. And that's what I wake up every day thinking about. And I think we're, 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 we've only got a few minutes left. So I'm, I'm going to go around and take that challenge, which is um, we need to do something different to address some of these pretty enormous challenges that David's just listed there. Um, so with your optimistic hat on, um, you know, what is that and what's that going to look like? Um, and um, well, let's go to you first, Dinesh. So, um, I feel that, uh, you know, there would be, I mean, the challenges would come and go, no doubt about it. And every time you're going to have different challenges. But I think what's, what's uh, you know, really important is, uh, you know, we need to change our lifestyle to a great extent. I think minimalistic, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle would definitely help. Secondly is we should also not just look at ourselves. And if you just keep looking at ourselves, you are not going to address any challenge. You are only going to keep addressing challenge that comes to you. But if you look at a larger uh, you know, horizon to address, you will be able to tackle every challenge. But uh, coming back to a specific uh, you know, uh, threat, what I see in the future, I mean, this time what we have seen, and a lot of people do call it, this, this has been like a biological warfare. Many people do say it. I wouldn't want to go into that. But the next challenge I feel is going to be a technological challenge. And it would be technology which right now what we say is a great boon, but can turn out to be the greatest big. That is my answer. Thanks for that. Uh, I think there was some agreement there on behavioral changes uh, needed. But you're, yes, and, and, and listing technology is, the next, is one of the next big challenges as well. Um, uh, Ranul, what's, what's, tell us the optimistic outcome um, that's, that's coming next. The most optimistic outcome will be the least pessimistic one. <laughs> Beyond that, but uh, it, it, did, it, it, it is uh, a big destabilization moment in the history of mankind. But, but how do you handle it? From day to the Spanish flu, we have just bungled the law. No one has ever got ready. I mean, if you look at Spanish flu, people are still winding up the World War One, the consequences, and 50 million died. But we have better technology. We have to do it well. But I, I think it's going to take some time before they start getting to it. But I would look at it as a start. And then what was the type of pressure that will build up uh, when people realize Maybe, maybe in the West, uh, when, when you have vaccinated everyone, you realize that you've got to look after the rest of the world. So let, let's see. The other one is, how many 100,000 people are going to Japan, Olympics? So immediate impact is how do you handle this? Okay. I think, uh, sadly, I don't think we're going to have enough time to come to you, Ishmu, but I, I think maybe the world needs to stop bungling is, is a good way to, uh, is a good way to end the session. So, um, Thank you to everybody. That was a really interesting conversation. I enjoyed it very much. And um, uh, let's hope the world listens um, at the G for, to this for head of the G7 next next week. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe. Thank you.